are from the Newburyport GOMI team and we are a group of students mainly from Newburyport High School who um, help raise awareness and go out into the fields about the environment. Um, I am now a junior at Newburyport High School and this is my second year with GOMI. Hi, I'm Noah Keller. Uh, this is also my second year at GOMI and I'm a uh, sophomore. So we're going to talk to you a little bit about what it means to be a GOMI member and what we're passionate about. The environment is very important to me because I spend a lot of time outside. My friends and I love to be outside, love to go to the beach, love to go in the woods in Maudsley. And we don't want to lose all of this. So the fact that our salt marshes are being hurt, sea level rise is increasing rapidly. There's unpredicted weather, unpredicted storms. Um, it's very scary to us, so we want to do everything in our power to preserve it. What about the environment's important to me is just how interconnected everything is. Like, the environment is such a broad topic, it's everything around us, and if we don't do our part to help save the environment, we'll die along with the environment, because we're not any better than all the other plants and trees and other organisms around, because you know, we're, we're all part of that. We come from the environment and we'll leave with the environment too. Something that I personally contribute to our environment and becoming more globally aware is being a part of an environmental group called GOMI. Along with advocating throughout my school and talking to my friends about the environment, along with raising awareness that I'm a vegetarian and for the reasons why. One thing that I would want to do to help the environment in the future is since I'm a really science-oriented person, I'm not really looking for the political side of environmentalism, but that's okay because it's such a broad subject. I could go out and try to find a definitive scientific way to help the environment, like better solar panels, better clean energy, and better ways to help save endangered species, while other people could want to lobby for more long. In the future, I believe Newburyport has what it takes to be a sustainable community, but we definitely need to raise awareness to our friends and to our family and show them how easy it is to be more environmentally aware. Um, that can be things such as recycling, such as re using reusable bags or picking up the beaches. It's really simple. You just have to find a way to do it. What's really important is just redefining what we think of as quality of life because you know right now kids just think you know leaving the lights on all the time and you know just going through food throwing out food waste is just something that comes innately to them naturally but really in the future we need to think you know we need to shut the lights off we need to conserve food conserve our resources because being environmentally conscious should be a given, it shouldn't be something someone chooses to do. Um, Erica is someone who um, she just had a baby, so she's not here with us today. But I, I'd just like you to take a minute and just read what Erica had to say, because I think it's a really beautiful quote. her idea that it starts with all of us but it doesn't end with us and that really that really spoke um, volumes to me um, for those of you who don't know me I'm Susan McCarlin I'm superintendent of schools here in the report and um, this is a follow-up meeting with our leadership team and with our invited guests um, to a retreat that we had earlier this year in which one of the things that we talked about was we talked about our students and our students becoming stewards of the environment. And that is something that ties right into some things that we're trying to do across the district through our mindfulness practice, through trying to get students to be mindful, to have students understand that, as you can see, the two students who spoke earlier, their commitment to the environment and their understanding that the environment is a responsibility of all of us. And we are doing 
lots of things across the district in many different ways to um, address the idea of mindfulness and uh, the environment. And we want to continue to expand that. We have many action plans within our five-year strategic plan um, that, get, that get to both the environment and mindfulness. And we really want to increase and uh, extend the resources that everyone in this room brings to the table. And we already know that we're doing some great work, and our students and staff are doing some great work across the district. But we want to come up with as many opportunities for our young people as we can to expand in this area. Um, and I, I just have to say that this couldn't be more timely with what we've seen in, with Harvey and with Irma and the devastation that's just being wrought around the, the, the globe. It's, it is just, it's, it's a very, it, it sends, I think, a message loud and clear to all of us that we have to, have to pay attention and that we have to, we have to think globally but yeah. act locally. Right. And we want to, New Report has identified itself as wanting to be a, a green community. And we have many people here who support those, those right. efforts. Um, and so from our, the, the last leadership team meeting that we had, we really want to think about how we can, how we can <coughs> what we can do to foster the idea of greater mindfulness regarding our environment. And that's really, um, that's really what the, the purpose of uh, today is. And I want to, I, I first need to sort of give a little bit of an apology because I'm gonna have to leave this meeting early today, but it is in no way indicative of, of my commitment and my passion around these activities. So I just wanna let people know that, and I'm gonna leave, um, leave this in the very capable hands of Angela Vick, um, our assistant superintendent, and Art Carrier, who I'm gonna introduce right now. Art is um, someone that, one of the first people that I met when I came to come back to New Report um, and came back to the North Shore five years ago. And um, Art and I have worked on a lot of different endeavors together in those five years uh, through the New Report Education Foundation, Art's work with the Vail Leadership Institute. Um, I certainly consider um, Art and an unbelievable friend to uh, the New Report Public Schools and a personal friend to me. Um, and he is somebody that I certainly consider a mentor. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Art. <coughs> Thank you very much. I'm sorry you have to leave for funeral, memorial service. And that's uh, not uh, necessarily good news, but having memories of your family members is very important. And having memories of our Earth is also important. And to expand upon the two young students, uh, what Noah and Jadine shared, this is provided for a little more context. And if you just think of the first sentence in the first paragraph, climate change is not only the greatest environmental issue of our time, but also a key issue for social justice, world health, immigration, and more. That's a significant statement. Very important issue at hand. Now, how do we see that? Well, the ocean currents, which moderate temperatures throughout the world and prevent Europe from being like Alaska, is slowing. Glaciers are disappearing. The sea ice in the Atlantic Arctic Ocean, you can dr they're driving cruise ships over the Arctic Ocean now, as well as the fact that hurricanes that we own, only know a little too well are becoming harsher with more water. This is a significant issue for society and the world. So I'm very glad that we're able to come together. And uh, I want to acknowledge that this is a global perspective. And one of the paradigms that's noted in the strategic plan handout is that we want to think globally, act locally. So we're acting locally in many ways. Gomi is certainly at the forefront. But the city itself is very proactive and has a master plan that has sustainability, sustainability all through it. Uh, other organizations, Storm Surge, the Climate Action Project 
from the first religious society. Transition Newburyport and the Merrimack River Watershed Council. So this is not just about what we're doing in the school system and what we're going to be doing in the school system and throughout the community. There's a lot of parties already at the table. And a lot of resources that are here in this room that want to help augment and support what's happening and what will happen. So um, how we're going to explore this is through some small groups. Each table, we're going to have some conversation. Conversation that will, uh, should allow us to address the overarching need, what I, I consider to be fostering mindfulness by understanding our climate and environmental reality and collaborating with others. <coughs> so this will be collaboration today. And that should lead to more interaction among a lot of parties. Overall, as Susan said, by being mindful and having <coughs> stewardship, we're going to make a lot more progress. I put out a little handout on the table that's guidelines for effective conversations. And uh, I think that the reason I, it's, it's real simple to have dialogue, just respectful communication. So if you just look at the bulleted parts of it, being curious and open to learning, show respect and suspend judgment. So if you don't believe something that somebody said, that's okay, that's what they said. This is not a back and forth, it's just listening and sharing. Finding common ground and appreciating differences, being authentic and welcoming that from others, being purposeful and to the point so we don't need, it's not about sharing everything you know, and own and guide the conversation. And and to make this work, since we don't have facilitators, we're going to have self-directed teams. And the uh, first team is going to address a qu question that we're going to have a little uh, exercise on. Before we get into talking about uh, the actual subjects of conversation. But I want to just share the fact that this document was sent to you earlier. It's a crazy of the strategic plan of the school system that was completed for 2016, 2020. And the reason we shared it is because this initiative <coughs> totally connects with the strategic plan and manifests it. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, the shared objective in the plan is that every student will have a positive impact on our evolving world. <coughs> That's for the objective to have an impact. And uh, in terms of values, I just want to note too, respect. That we're showing respect in terms of recognizing the rights and worth of others, the school and community property, and the environment. I think another one is innovation, in that uh, throughout the world, we really have to be approaching problems in new and different ways. So this is how we connect. Um, somebody's made it, asked a question about uh, David, who's videotaping this. The reason we did videotaping is to be prepared down the road to have something in the can, because this is a start of an initiative that's very significant. So if somebody said, you know, based upon what's happened, we should really be able to share this with other communities. It could be a documentary developed. So that's why we have somebody videotaping this. We're not going to be videotaping all the conversations, but we're videotaping what this is. And, you know, being prepared, I wish we could be more prepared, but um, we'll be better equipped to understand where we're going through this conversation. There's no plans coming down from anywhere. This is about us. So let's, somebody pick up the rock that's on the table, the stone, the Shari Melto, brought from Plum Island today as a symbol oh, of being connected to the earth. Now whoever's got that stone is going to facilitate this little exercise. <laughs> no. Go back to you. Every, every, Go back it's okay. To this is really easy. So, with this stone, so you just make sure in the next 90 seconds, minute and a half, that everybody shares with the group. Molly? 
Don't pick it up. Um, <laughs> just share with the group something that you're very happy about that you experienced in the recent times. Just anything that comes to your mind that you're happy about. I want to. We're going to start this on a sharing positive note. So. <laughs> right now, go ahead. You <laughs> personal, this is whatever is personally, whatever you personally are happy about that you experienced recently, just share it. There's no guidelines beyond that. <laughs> shows concise thinking because the person with the stone wants to hand the stone the person to his or her right so that person becomes the facilitator and by facilitating it's just a matter of making sure that everybody gets a chance you guys got it easy <laughs> um, because the, the question deserves one sentence response Okay? And that is, what initiative that you can identify that you were involved with that was successful? If you're just thinking of an initiative that you were connected to and it was successful. And it's just what the initiative was. You don't have to explain it, just name it. Okay. We've got. Two minutes to do this. Okay. And you don't have to record this down. It's, it, you, you, all you have to do is talk, say what the initiative is. There's going to be a follow-up question. Okay. somebody who's going to scribe because we're going to use the flip chart that's on the table and at the top of it what I would like you to share so there's one person who's going to be a scribe and there's another person who's going to be the facilitator to make sure everybody gets something to say okay this is a volunteer effort 
you guys, everybody gets a chance for twice. So the, the idea is, who's going to be the scribe? You see the paper, there's a pen. The second person is going to be a facilitator and make sure everybody feeds into this question. This question is, what helped make it successful? What you just noted, you said was successful. Well, what helped make it successful? Sentence, two sentences. You know, again, you don't need to go into a whole long explanation. But because we're going to write the idea down, you're going to write the idea down. You want to be as concise as possible, at least in writing it down. Okay? We've got there's going to be one thing for each person that helped me. Now, you may have the same, you know, but what stands out in your mind? But what may be in your mind? Mine was actually giving the students any more seconds? Finish writing the notes. So did, was that a learning exercise? Did that put some things in the system that were interesting? One another? Did you, by that sharing, discover some things? Thinking of that, what's on that list? And what you, the work you're doing, whatever you, the work you're doing is, what actions could we take to move this initiative forward and foster greater mindfulness about our environment and planet? In the schools, in the community, in the world. But let's start with the schools and the community. So thinking about what you just outlined as ingredients for successful initiatives, and this is an initiative about our being mindful about our environment and planet, what are the things that there could you apply to move this forward? Does anybody not, does anybody want to talk about that or share what you, are you, are you comfortable with that? It's jokes. I was to come up with like specific initiatives that might be helpful to first the schools and the community in terms of solving some specific environmental problems or what are we aiming to get? We're towards? aiming to have specific actions that can be taken that will foster more mindfulness about our environment and planet in the schools and perhaps because the schools become more learned, it's outside the schools, it's with parents, it's with so, thinking of the community wanting to be more mindful, at least we would want the community to be more mindful, and we're starting here. Things have to start someplace, and we've already got a strategic plan in place that we want to, we're connecting with. So, what specific things can we do versus general things? So, we don't want other initiatives, we want to know specific actions that can be taken that will take advantage of collaboration, communication, perseverance, out-of-the-box thinking. Those are the types of things that made other initiatives successful, so we want to take advantage of those things. 
we don't need to reinvent something if we've already seen and been involved with things that have worked. So if we apply those to this initiative of being mindful about our environment and planet, then we're going to make progress. So if you just think of any actions that can be taken, any actions that can be taken, get them at school to send them. Yeah, just leave it. Exactly. So share and, and Bill, you can have a conversation about it. It's not any one person's idea. You may have to rock. Yes. She's on. Mike's going to hand off the rock. with everybody else. <clears throat> so to do that, if you look at what the, uh, what you've written down, and you select the three <coughs> most significant, most important, that would have the great, greatest impact on moving this initiative forward. And this is not an initiative where things are coming down from the top, it's organic, it's starting here. So it's what we want to take and employ and share with everybody to make it alive. So the question is, what are the three most important things that you believe we can collectively do? And you're going to mark the little post-its there. Put one per post-it before in case you need to make a change. And there's others if you need to. One per, and then you're going to select one person from your group that's going to stand up and read those and post them on the board. So we've got this 20, 20 minutes to do this. One of you needs to make sure everybody gets a chance to come to that process, but it's a collaborative effort right now. You have to collaborate on what three things you're going to bring forward. Anybody in questions? Okay. Thank you. Can I put that down as a as one of our Yeah, 
I, I thought opportunity was just something. Yeah. Whomever is the, the you know chosen person out of your group, if you could come up front and read to everybody what is on the post-it, and then put the post-it right on these white ones. Who wants to go first? Volunteers. Go first. We'll get it over with. Okay, Jill. Where's Jill? Um, so these yeah. are the three ideas that our group came up with. And the first one is, uh, we talked a lot about trying to educate students about the being mindful about global and local environmental challenges and what can be done about that. Um, but um, thanks to Lisa Furlong at our table, who is actually the principal of the school, um, we realized that we really needed to involve the teachers first because the teachers have so many demands on them nowadays that hearing, oh, there's another thing we want you to do might be very awkward. So our first idea was to have either a survey, what do teachers need from us, or some kind of a forum to help uh, communicate what's going on locally with them, or some kind of a focus group with teachers and staff first. Okay, so that's here. And then secondly, um, the idea is that there are so many different things going on around town, it just makes your head spin. There's GOMI, there's all of Molly's initiatives, there's a Solarize new program, there's a bunch of stuff, there's a lot of people who are working kind of in discrete areas. Um, and the idea would be that if we're going to talk, be talking about being mindful about environmental challenges, we need to build sort of a narrative about what they are and the groups that are working on them. So the idea would be to use social media in some coherent way to do that. And then finally, um, for a specific idea, um, Molly is getting going on a carbon counting project. Um, the the report with Deb Shepard. And the idea might be for us uh, specifically to try and explore opportunities for uh, students to be involved in that project, either to help or become educated about it, which would be an awesome way to educate them um, about challenges specifically related to carbon emissions. Wonderful. That's it. Welcome. <coughs> We had a, a pretty fruitful discussion in our group, I think, that reflected a lot of what you have spoken about. We're suggesting that it sort of get approached a little bit differently, but it's pretty much the same ideas. Um, one of the first things, and we felt that we sort of have a one A, B, C, and two, is the way we did ours. So um, one of our one of our members called it going rogue. So I'm Who happy that to, table over there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was us. So anyway, um, we felt that a, a, a sort of in a parallel, parallel tracks that we need to sort of um, identify on uh, on a real sort of overview level what it is we're currently doing right. What are we doing right now in science, and what are we doing at each sort of grade level in science? What 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 is the curriculum calling for us to be doing? And that's a conversation that we think you know the curriculum specialists have with with Angela, with maybe the principal sitting in saying, this is what we're doing and this is when we're doing it. This is, this is sort of our, our scope for the year at each level, okay? Second, then at the same time, we pull together a meeting of community resources and identify community assets, resources, potential partnerships, potential offerings, so that at, at, on parallel tracks, we've got, we're generating, this is what we're doing, this is what's available that we've got, and then at some point, um, we, we bring those together so that we can say, oh yeah, we want to do this. Oh, well, we've got somebody who's doing you know, erosion work. 
that goes really well with the work that you're doing about dunes and, and waterfront. And then the third part of that process is to create a process that is age appropriate to engage student ideas and participation. So that it's not driven top down, that it actually, we're making sure that, that you know, we're, we're, we're asking third graders, we're gonna learn about the oceans. How would you think you might wanna learn about that? What might be an interesting thing to do? And then we go to our list that, that shows what we can do. And then the third, uh, or number two actually, is to create a collaborative pilot, to do it as a pilot, so that it's manageable, we have the opportunity for creativity, and we actually get something done that, that comes out of these ideas. We didn't go row, we just had three. <laughs> uh, Somebody's got to color the lines, yeah. right? <laughs> I'm with you. Buddy. I'm with you. Uh, we said that there was um, one of the things we need to do is to create a sense of need among students, uh, teachers, and community members. That we felt that it was really powerful if things were done peer to peer. So a climate cafe model, uh, NHS fresh and mindfulness that we do with our summer reading program, and the use of community experts would be uh, things that we would feel that would be more beneficial. Um, to reach students and then using our existing opportunities that we don't have to reinvent the wheel here that we have a summer reading mindfulness program of freshmen that this could probably just be seamless to, to go into. We have advisory advisee at the high school. We have the seventh grade GOMI uh, program. We have access to all these community resources. We have green teams with a new report and we, you know, we're we're, we're constantly saying we need you know, exper experiential learning activities and opportunities for our students. And so this all hopefully can be blended together. So those are our questions. So ours, um, listening to all of these, probably be 101, 102, and 103 because <laughs> they're more like outcomes, I think, um, because I, I like the idea of how do you start to get here, so mm -hmm. do you agree? So um, first, using the school community as a teaching tool, so we have a lot of things in place, like we do recycling in the cafeteria, but how can we broaden that? How can we expand the education to the students about like, where does it go? Once it leaves us, how do we separate it? Things uh -huh. like that. So led to ideas like composting, or um, what does it mean to be the green building? You know, more than the signs that we have around, and, and actually bringing it down to the really young level. Um, and we have younger children, and we were a small group, so that was a little bit more related um, to residents. So I'm going to put it over here. And it's like an outcome. Um, and maybe over here, um, maybe an Earth Day festival um, came up as an idea. Um, and Deb was um, telling us about it could include activities about like a waste audit where um, they, she builds mm -hmm. like a mount um, trash more and they actually take the trash out and then they weigh how much could have been recycled and so on. So we were kind of like in the mode of thinking of activities. And then, um, however we do it, that there, there could be, actually I'll put this one here, um, a peer leadership service training, so engagement between the schools. Um, we do rely on um, high school students to come and do different things with us. Sometimes they help out with recess, but couldn't, like the students that we saw, be a nice connection across all the buildings to kind of build momentum and enthusiasm. So our group is somewhere in between. There's some here and some here. Um, we talked about having local field trips to educate all about the environment and specifically about Newbury Port local natural resources. And so that kind of fits in nicely with that group's idea of, you know, bringing it to the concrete, to a concrete level for our students, especially the smaller ones. Um, and then we did also think, like the group behind us, are there gaps within our cur curriculum or standards that this can fill in with bringing in 
um, you know, community speakers and all of that that could support teachers in teaching a certain standard that they feel they are not as knowledgeable. And also bringing in community speakers to educate high school students who in turn will educate the younger students. So they could go to the middle school and then the middle school can go to the mall and the mall can come to us. So that's similar to what everyone has talked about. Um, we talked about very similar things. I don't think anything is worth shouting. One of the things we talked about is as you take it from each level to the next, from the this room to the community level, to the teacher level, to the student level, to just make sure that everything is defined in ways that everybody can understand, not just the people who are passionate and get it. Um, you know, the, the people who will look at you and go, what are you talking about? What are we doing? How do I do it? Where do I start? So making sure that's all set for people. Um, Angela pointed out that there's life science curriculum in every science at every grade. So if each grade could latch on to a tangible thing, an action, a project, a lesson, an activity, um, you can start to build that across K-12. Um, and then the other thing we had was similar to like an Earth Day Festival, like campaigns and things to make it fun. It shouldn't just be like shaming people. It should actually be an enjoyable <laughs> thing. Um, so sometimes, you know, it's not the best, but like it should be fun at some point. So. <laughs> We connect to many. Um, the biggest one, we tried to fill our post-it, um, <laughs> is to build connections and to amplify or enhance work already occurring. In doing so, connecting to current school processes for staff, such as if there are PLCs happening, if there was a room to talk about this work in PLCs that makes sense to a process already in place. Um, I. Um, but also, as someone else stated, identifying um, what is happening with students throughout the schools already and identifying the resources nationally, state, and local available. And we thought in identifying all that's happening and connecting those dots and identifying the resources and connecting those dots, that would help clarify the story or the message or th what this is. You know, what, what is it that is already happening and how does it connect? Um, how can these things connect together instead of being silos? But um, we had a lot of conversation that basically came back to the need for planning or roadmap for this work, not to jump directly to action. Right. So the outcomes, which is similar to what many said, so that that plan would have um, articulated goals, a precise message, it would um, take into consideration the role of the educator not being responsible for all of this. We talked a lot about collaboration and, um, and being realistic. So I think that that theme came up with much of what was shared. Did I? Yeah. Thank you. Thank everybody. Uh, did you feel that there's some meat to what we put up on, on the boards? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In terms of an organic process that we've got some things we can work on. It seemed to me in terms of clustering this, the sort of the planning, organizational uh, thoughts, considerations, communications, and ideas. So if we put those in those three buckets, uh, because we're going to create Capture these as well as all the ideas you have listed. <coughs> do our best to capture them um, and share them back. And Angela's going to say a couple of things, but I think I, everybody's participation is a little bit buzz in the room. I feel it's productive. I hope you thought your thoughts were received. Well. Hey, sorry. Some great thinking. I think it's always exciting to be able to come together and collaborate this way and share our ideas. But anytime we come up with ideas, 
there's always another side that there's usually some needs associated, right? For us to be able to bring those ideas to life. So I'm gonna ask each group to take a few minutes to think about um, what needs there are to move forward on some of these things. So we wanted you to come up with the ideas before you started to think about what the needs are that might be associated with the ideas. So we can identify what your needs might be to bring these to life. Also, um, we're asking that you think about how this initiative connects to our strategic plan. So look at the ways that have been outlined in the document that you have here and think about the work that's underway with the strategic plan and how this initiative might make connections or be able to enhance any components of that. And then also, if you are in the school district, and even if you're not in the school district, you might want to be thinking about this too, but one step that you might be able to take in each building as we think about our staff, because one of the things we heard loud and clear is we really need to have the involvement of our staff before we bring it to a student level or anything um, like that. So think about just one step, and we'll talk about that at our next leadership meeting. So you don't really have to do anything with that. Jot it down once you come up with one step that you think might be a first step in your building, and we'll follow up with that at our next leadership. Okay. So we'll take about 10 minutes. Yes, Bruce. I guess, will we get some sort of summary? I'm sorry if I missed that. We will. You will. Okay. Yes. What we're going to do is we're going to take all of your brainstorming sheets and we're going to categorize or cluster some of these categories like Art just talked about. We'll have that typed up and we'll send that out. Okay. All right.